Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and in today's video I'm going to be using the S1 Laser Machine by Xtool. I'm going to be installing the infrared module that fits this machine. I'm going to be doing the unboxing, the installation, and then to check out the versatility of this IR module, I'm going to be running a number of different sample projects on different materials. And some of those materials you'll have a chance to win. Find out more details about that by checking out the video description. All of this and more coming up in this video. Let's get things started by covering the materials I'll be using when I test the IR module. Starting out with a silver colored necklace and then moving on to a gold colored necklace. Unfortunately, this is not real gold, just gold colored. After that, I have a blue anodized ID tag. After that, I'm going to have a stylus for an Apple iPod. This is one of the giveaways in today's video. This hard plastic stylus is going to be perfect for using the IR module to do a nice engraving. And lastly, I have a set of silicone watch bands that fit Apple watches. These two are part of today's giveaway, and if you win one of these watch bands, I'll also include a brand new silicone watch band that you can engrave with your machine. On the top, I'm greeted with a nice user manual and then some included practice materials. There's also a fastener bag with two screws and an Allen wrench, some packaging foam, and then this is what we've been waiting for is the two watt infrared module. I really like the silver lettering across the top and the bottom indicating this is the two watt infrared module. And when we flip it to the side, we're going to see here's the area where the autofocus switch gets mounted to. That's right, the infrared module utilizes the autofocus found on the S1 laser machine. On the back, there's a set of magnets to help guide the module in place along with the typical guide pin in the middle. And when I flip this around to the top, this is securely held in place just like all the other modules on the S1 series with two mounting screws. When we look at the other side of the module, we're going to see the typical electrical connection port and the port for connecting the air assist hose. However, when we take a look at the bottom, we see that the IR module does not utilize air assist and that's because air assist is counterproductive when marking certain types of metals. Here's a quick comparison of the two modules, 40 watt, 2 watt IR. We're going to see that, of course, the case size of the IR module is going to be the same because it needs to mount up to where all the other modules mount up. First thing I'll do is remove the autofocus switch off of the module. And I'll put that on the new module. And I'll remove the electrical connector. Just a little wiggle and that comes off easily. Another little wiggle on the airline and that pops right off. And using the Allen wrench that is included with the IR module, I can take out the two screws. Move that screw and now the module just lifts straight up and out. That quick to remove the old module. And we'll install the new module. It snaps into place with the magnets. And I'll use the two screws I just took out to attach the new module. Screw number two is securely fastened. And I'll attach the air assist hose. That snaps right into place. And just that quick and easy, in about one minute, the new module is installed on the machine. Move that out of the way. And reinstall the honeycomb. 
And we'll also see that I have a piece of cardstock put down there. I have this down because the material that I'm going to be engraving in just a minute or two, I want to tape that down to this cardstock so during the engraving process, that material doesn't move around. Before I get started with the first project engraving, I just want to highlight one last time just how quick and easy it is to install the laser module on this machine. When I compare that to other laser machines I've featured on the laser channel, when I swapped out to an IR module, those other brands take like 10 to 15 minutes. The laser module is held on with more screws. And when I talk about the electrical connections, that is a huge time hog. The electrical connections on that other brand is in the form of a flat ribbon cable. It's very small, very delicate, and it goes up to a very small micro connector. And that micro connector is located on a printed circuit board. And that circuit board has to get replaced when using the IR module. And the real kicker is when I switch back to the stock or the laser diode module, that printed circuit board has to go back to the original one that came with the machine. Now, if that's starting to sound a little time consuming and a little bit complicated, that's because it is, and that's why I wanted to highlight just how fast and easy it is to swap out the laser modules on this machine. Well, now we're ready to start with the first engraving of this silver necklace. I'm going to get this squared up and placed inside of the machine. And for my first tip, uh, because this necklace does have the chain attached to it, means it's going to sit at a little bit of an angle. So I'm going to uh, have this block of wood underneath it and have that chain hang off the end. That way, this necklace, the surface I'm engraving, is going to be totally flat and even to the engraving uh, laser head. In the Xtool Creative Space software, we're going to see that the first graphic is going to be the text rabbit. The first thing that I'm going to do is mark out where my material is inside of the machine. That way I have that relationship of where I should place my graphic here. And I'll need to uh, autofocus the machine over that work material. And then I will be able to click on mark process area. And once that's complete, I can click on that. And I'm going to tell it a rectangle and start marking. Some of this reflective material is a little bit hard to see. So sometimes what I like to do is take a yellow post-it note and just kind of hang out in the corner here a little bit or get that post-it note right on the very corner. And that way it's much easier to see the crosshairs. And when I like what I see, I can hit the button on the front of the machine. It'll beep saying that it took the setting. And now I can go to the opposite corner. When I'm happy with that location, I can hit the button on the front of the machine and I'm all set. I'll click on end marking and done. And now when I scroll wheel down a little bit, we'll see that this is the work area that I've got inside of the machine. Pretty cool feature. I'm going to be following these steps for all of the different materials that I'll be using in today's video. I'm just going to show it on this first one, but just know on all the other ones, this is the method of how I align my graphics up to the work material inside of the machine. Now I can grab my text and place that inside and that looks good, just sized the way it is. Now when I click off to the side here, we'll see that the work material there is a preset for the silvery barred necklace, which is what I have that comes as a sample with the IR module. And I have that selected. So now when I select that layer, we'll see that I'm on engrave. It's at 90% power with a speed of 160 millimeters per second and 300 lines per centimeter. And this is gonna be one of the things that we see with the IR modules is the lines per centimeter is typically much higher because the spot size of an IR module is typically much smaller and capable of a lot more resolution. All I have left to do here is to run the project. So I'll put some music on and we'll do a little time segment of this first project being made.
There, I think I caught the light on it. I think I caught the reflection on it just right. Check out all of that detail. This looks amazing. Next up is going to be the gold colored necklace. And after reading the description of the sample materials that are included with the IR laser module, this is in fact going to be a rose colored necklace, which I have to agree with. The cool thing about this is it's going to set up exactly the way the silver necklace just set up. And when we take a look at the X tool creative space, we're going to see that there's also preset settings for this rose colored necklace. I remarked my process area and we're going to see that my graphic is off center just a little bit. So I can just move that back and that looks good. In fact, I think I want to make it just a little bit bigger. I'll grab that corner and recenter it up and it snaps right to the center. Um, I'm going to go up here under material and scroll wheel down until I get that rose gold bar necklace and I'll click back on my graphic and check out the settings and I slow the speed down a little bit. And I think I'd like to slow it down just a little bit more because I'd like to see if that'll make the engraving just a touch bit darker. This all looks good and I'll set the other camera up and we'll watch this one engrave as well. Here's a nice close up and once again we see there's a tremendous amount of detail and everything looks clean and very neat. This engraving by the way took just under one minute. If you're wondering why I'm engraving the word rabbit on these necklaces, that's because I know a runner who specializes in short distance running so I thought the word rabbit is very fitting. Next I have the blue ID tag. Now historically a blue laser diode can engrave anodized aluminum ID tags just as long as it's not bare aluminum or blue like this one because a blue laser diode really has troubles engraving into blue materials. However with the IR module it really doesn't care what the color of this ID tag is. Just like before I'll get this set up in the machine. And I'm gonna pick a different graphic for this project. We'll check that out in just a second in the software. I've got my graphic loaded in. It was actually a picture image that I used the trace function and then shrank it down to fit inside of the ID tag. And when I zoom in a little bit, we'll see that it is a space cat. So pretty cool. Uh, we'll see that the material I referenced a black metal business card and my experience with those is they engrave very, very easily. And when I click on my graphic, we're going to see the default settings when I switch it over to engrave is going to be a power of 80%, a line speed of 200 millimeters per second and 200 lines per centimeter. I think this looks good. And I'm ready to hit the start button on this and I'll be back with you in just a second. Once again, I'm getting perfect results. Next up is going to be the stylus for an iPad. This is hard plastic and definitely very engravable by the IR module. This is one of the giveaways in today's video. Be sure to check out in the video description on details on how you could win the stylus. I'll get this set up in the machine just the way I did with the first two projects and we'll meet back up in the Xtool software. This is gonna be a really interesting engraving because on that stylus on the very top surface, we're gonna see that there is a flat area and that's what I'm engraving, but it's very, very small. I went ahead and marked out the processing area and put the laser channel in the middle and I picked a font that has a lot of fine detail. So it's gonna be a real good test to see how much that detail shows through. When I click on the text, we're going to see that the height of that text is only going to be 2.6 millimeters tall. 
Now inside the materials for uh, the Xtool software, they don't have anything for this hard plastic. So I referenced three millimeter black acrylic. And when I click on my graphic, we're going to see that um, it was at 100% power. I backed it off to 95%, the speed at 150 millimeters per second. And then the lines per centimeter is set at 200. This looks perfect and very professional looking. Yeah, I'm still admiring the detail. It's just really fun to look at just how clean and crisp the detail that this is able to produce on a hard plastic like this stylus. The first watch band is loaded into the machine. I went and found another graphic. This time I found a feather. I thought that would look nice on a watch band. And when I click on the graphic, we're going to see I'm on engrave and manual setting for this. I'm gonna run at 100% power uh, speed. I think I'll turn that down to 150 millimeters per second and lines per centimeter at 200 looks good. And we'll give this a try and see what it looks like. Let's be honest, I bet some of you are thinking there's no way that IR module is ever going to engrave a silicone watch band, but here we are looking at a nice feather with some nice intricate detail. This watch band, I did end up engraving it twice and that is because I used some double-sided tape to stick it down inside of the work area and right before I hit the start button, it popped up throwing it out of focus. So I had to retape it and run it again because the engraving only really showed up at the very bottom. So I am going to grab the other watch band and rerun the same engraving again, making sure that the watch band is securely fastened down to my work area. I'm also going to slow the machine down quite a bit and see if we can't get a little bit darker engraving on the watch band. Here's the second watch band with one pass. Looks like the engraving is gonna be typically a golden color with these silicone watch bands. Here's all of the engravings from today's video. Thanks for joining me in today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a like, Subscribe to the channel and definitely ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help the laser channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. Join me in the next video coming out, which is again going to feature the S1 laser machine by Xtool. It's going to help celebrate a pretty big milestone on the laser channel. And that is, I'm just a couple of days away from reaching 10,000 subscribers. Something I've only dreamed of doing and here it is right around the corner. And ironically, the laser channel started with featuring videos from Xtool. So for that video, I'll give you a sneak peek. I was going to be making a project out of this thick block of wood. I'm gonna cut it down a little bit, but the thickness is too thick to fit inside of the S1 machine. So I have the accessory of the riser base. I'll grab that. So in that next video, I'm gonna put this together, get it installed on the machine, and then run this project through it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And as usual, it's gonna feature a lot of tips and tricks that you come to find and expect on the Laser Channel. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.